Jeff Bezos are working to make it possible, but finding a new home on the red planet will likely only be for the rich, leaving the poor to suffer as Earth's environment collapses and conflict breaks out. Well, good riddance, super rich. If you need help packing, there are millions of Americans that would be happy to oblige. Earth is in turmoil because of the super rich, not the average citizen working nine to five, unyielding war, race division propaganda, centralized banking systems, mega corporations raking in huge profits while destroying the middle class. In income inequality, this is something I think we've all thought about you know, I was working on that topic when I was still at Goldman Sachs, and, uh, and, uh, In which direction? Oh, well, you're working on incre increasing it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> make it wider. <laughs> but, 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 I, I think... Carbon tax madness regulated in the name of phony climate science and terrorists funded by a black budget so the elite can win at their little global board game of risk. Not to mention the protected heroin industry, disappearing children, and sex slave trade as a result of the Luciferian doctrine many of the elite openly subscribe to. Plus, your Frankenstein monster Isis would be left holding the bag if you rocketed off to another planet. Trust me, ISIS doesn't want to deal with 300 plus million angry Americans. The ISIS threat would be gone in a heartbeat. And please, save a seat for everyone in Congress. With those idiots gone, and our constitution and rights fully adhered to and represented, we would plot a course for thousands of years of happiness, prosperity, and liberty on Spaceship Earth. Maney continues, This is the unspoken flip side of Musk's SpaceX and Bezos' Blue Origin. The space travel companies say they are creating a way for the human species to endure by populating other planets. But the bottom line is that only the wealthy will have the means to move to Mars. Musk's target ticket price is $500,000 a person in 2015 dollars. And that's just to get there. Imagine the new outfits you'll have to buy to go with that space helmet. Seriously, Maney? What is this? Lifestyles of the rich and brainless? We all know the real reason the super rich want to leave with their tails between their legs. The sleeping giant's eyes are opening. The wealthy are purchasing secret hideaways in remote locations in order to escape social upheaval and possible riots. Sign this little scrap of paper and you get your bottle absolutely free. I hereby turn over to Ism Incorporated everything I have, including my freedom and the freedom of my children and my children's children, in return for which said Ism promises to take care of me forever. So from myself and the exponentially growing InfoWars audience, I have one question for the super rich. When's your flight? John Bound for InfoWars.com. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity, 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here late, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu, and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago, I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes, and now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things and if it has those kind of effects for me i know that it will do great things for you so just try super male vitality i promise you you'll love it and finally let's look at anthony gucciardi infowars.com reporter he also works with dr group and others helping develop the newest most cutting edge high quality supplements Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. My guest today is Joy Brighton. She is the author of Shariaism is Here, the Battle to Control Women and Everyone Else. Now, Joy is a former Wall Street trader as well as a longtime champion of women's rights. And it was out of this growing concern uh, for ab abuses of women here in America, sanctioned in the name of religion, culture, and Sharia, that prompted her to write this book. And she makes the case that Shariaism is here, thanks to Muslim immigration and the political correctness that's allowing it to take hold and spread. So Joy, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, you wrote this book in 2014, but it seems to be ever more prevalent uh, and growing concern with this topic. Where did your concern with Shariaism begin? My concern began with uh, September 11th, frankly, living in New York City. And I've always been very keen on women's rights, uh, equal rights. And I started really learning about Sharia law and about kind of the treatment of women across the globe. And as we learned more as the internet more globalized, I really started to see what was happening and the oppression of women in that part of the world. And started noticing that coming into actually America. Uh, many of our viewers probably have already seen women walking around in burqas and things like this. And the question is, is that really appropriate? I mean, is are these women, is this a choice that they have? Are they truly equal? How can you be treated equally when you're basically invisible in a tent? Yes, I do agree with that. Um, you know, obviously we have just like with Christianity or any religion, you'll have uh, different levels, different ways of interpreting uh, those religious texts. And so there is sort of a difference um, with that. So what do you see with like maybe American Muslims versus their foreign counterparts that is maybe raising alarms? Well, uh, surprisingly, this, this, we're actually seeing a lot of similarity. I mean, we're, we're seeing, um, I mean, there, of course, there are many Muslims who come to this country looking for freedoms and things like this. But what we're seeing that's very different about this particular immigrant group is that most immigrant groups, when they come over, the parents who come over are, are still have their still have their foot in their home countries. And the children grow up in America really understanding and, and, and embracing individual liberties. What we're seeing in this country is the reverse. We are seeing Muslims parents coming to this country looking for freedom of religion and free individual liberties. But what we're seeing is that their children actually are embracing a more fundamental Islam. 
And it has to do with a kind of Muslim Islamic pride that's going on, um, which is good. And at the same time, it's not clear that these young people really understand uh, the fundamental Islam. They're just proud of their Islamic heritage, but they're being uh, educated in various places, which we can talk about, which is influencing them to maybe be more a little bit accommodating to the fundamental side. And that's what we're kind of seeing this homegrown radicalism going on in this country. Sure, I would love to get into that because that's uh, sort of, you know, one of the questions people have is where is this radicalization coming from? Is it from the mosques? Is it purely from social media, which is what Obama would like us to believe that that's how we need to counter this? Um, so yeah, where is this coming from? Well, I can tell you where it's not coming from. It, it generally is not coming from the parents who have emigrated here. It is not coming from them. Uh, because we, you know, there's a pipeline in, in Minnesota, as an example, of many young people who have gone, at least two dozen who have gone over to fight ISIS. And we know that their family members are, are afraid for them and had no idea that this was going on until they actually received a phone call from some of them in Somalia or Pakistan saying, here's where I am. So it's not coming from the families. Yes, there's a social media uh, component of this. And at the same time, it's coming through the mosque. Uh, not all mosques, but we do know that 80% of the mosques in this country uh, are owned by Saudi Arabia. The title is actually owned by Saudi Arabia. And we're seeing this influx of this very radical, fundamental, what's called Wahhabi type of radical Islam being supported in the mosque network. And so just for some Muslims out there that you say maybe they don't understand necessarily the roots where do the lines get blurry or where where should they even pay attention to where it could cross into extremism? Well, for example, we're seeing a lot of young black women and Latino women uh, being, converting to, to Islam because the idea of having a community of being part of something, a lot of these women are single, they have, they have children, they're single mothers, they're looking for a family to join. And so they are, they are wooed by some of these Muslim men who are very attractive, very westernized into uh, what appears to be peaceful Islam, the religion itself. But over time, what we're seeing is that they're actually being entrapped in a very fundamental household. An example of this is the, um, the Boston Marathon bombers, the two brothers. One of them married a young woman who was completely secular, uh, and slowly she converted to Islam. But what happened is she was actually reeled into fundamental Islam. At the end of this, she was beaten constantly. She was cloaked. She wasn't allowed out of the house. She was basically a, a prisoner in her own home. And, uh, and of course, we know what her husband did. Mm. Right. And of course, we see that with just victims of domestic violence in general, how they, they say it's not as easy as people think to just leave, to get out. Obviously, there's sort of a mental uh, component there as well. So why do you think that this Shariism is a form of control? Well, Shariaism is a form of control because if you think about religion, religion has rules for its members to follow, whatever religion you have. And so, for example, we'll take the religion of Islam, which should be protected under the First Amendment. So Islam has a rule, for example, that, that a, a, a Muslim must not criticize his prophet, his sin. That's religion. But then when you cross the line and you say to me as a Muslim that I cannot criticize your prophet under fear of death, that all of a sudden has cross the line. Now you're forcing your way of life on my way of life, and that's control. That is the difference. And the line that you cross is actually the Constitution. So faith is rules that you, you voluntarily decide to follow on your own for your own personal benefit. And control is when you start forcing me to follow some rules. In this case, because those rules have some kind of religious basis to them, uh, it's, it's kind of getting a free pass as, well, maybe this is just religion. And no, this is not religion. This is political control, something which I and others are calling Shariaism. Mm. And so why do you think that it's been so successful in rooting itself here in the West? Well, that's a good question. And because if you look at Nazism or communism or Maoism, these were all also very much political movements of control. That didn't, that didn't grow the kind of roots that we're seeing here with Shariaism. And the reason for that is a couple. First of all, you've got this false cover of, of religion, the fact that this is a religion. And of course, if we think it's a religion, we're not going to be very sensitive about that. Um, you have, um, you have uh, Muslim Brotherhood groups 
in this country that are that are saying, well, wait a minute, you know, this is these are social action 